Welcome to Benita's Maternity Program webinar. Today we are discussing pregnancy after miscarriage with Sister Talia. Welcome, Sister. Hi, good day. Welcome, everyone. Yes, so today we'll be speaking about this um, episode, pregnancy after miscarriage. And the reason why I chose the subject is because a lot of women experience this. And I know it's not a subject that is often talked about. Unfortunately, it is something that occurs. And I think a lot of women need some information regarding what to do after it. So even if you had a miscarriage, it is pregnancy was an enormous time of excitement. And the sudden loss of a baby or a fetus can be quite, quite a big and traumatic experience for a mom or mom-to-be. Following the loss, you experience various emotions. Uh, we do know that it has emotions of grief. So grief will first be denial. Then we come to a stage where we also bargain about certain things, thinking, you know, did I do it right? What did I do wrong? And then we also get to a stage where we finally accept what has happened. And why I posted this, a lot of moms, one question to me is when I am doing some counseling with a mom is, when can I get pregnant again? When should I get pregnant again? So uh, miscarriage is actually quite a frequent thing that happens. And when it does happen, a lot of moms feel like it's only them. However, you guys are not in contact constantly, maybe with other moms experience it. It is a very, very frequent thing to occur. If it's a very harsh subject. So most women have the fear that they'll never have a proper pregnancy that will go full term and that can diminish the excitement of a next pregnancy. So that's why I also wanted to do this to let you know regarding that. And then what do I need to do to have, get pregnant again after a loss? And that is very, very unique. What do I do in terms of my health? What do I do in terms of, um, you know, my lifestyle? All those things. So it's not always a straightforward thing. This is merely suggestions. But we do know that we are here to support you through this journey. So chromosomal problems do occur. And this can result in a miscarriage. I always tell moms, and with new technology, we are finding out you're pregnant at two weeks with the little clear blue test. And to be honest, in the olden days, you would only find out by the time you would have had some nausea, vomiting, um, oftentimes a little tummy, you could feel some things moving. Those are as late as people used to feel. But now we are more in tune. We have all the technology to tell us we're pregnant. So now I do find out quite early. So nature would have kind of sift out their own process. They would have known there's maybe some chromosomes, um, chromosomal problems. There's some um, problems with mom, um, uterine issues. There could have been even some um, sexually transmitted diseases and infections that could have occurred that could result in, in miscarriage and even autoimmune diseases of moms. And before the three months, Nature would have taken its course and miscarriage would have occurred and it would have looked like a normal period if you did not know you're pre pregnant. So now we find it quite early because we are having kids later. We are planning our babies. So we plan this baby. We find it pregnant. We know it's two weeks and all these weeks progress. And here we have our miscarriage before 12 weeks. So it is very dramatic. And, and those are all reasons. Remember, there's a whole array of, of re reasons why we can miscarriage. But today, we're going to look at more of what to do next. Okay. And it can occur suddenly. It can start off with uh, cramping, pain, and then bleeding. So bleeding will be your tissue of pregnancy as well as um, all the other tissue. However, we must remember that with that bleeding and miscarriage, it's not like a full-term pregnancy where a mom has a stillborn. Stillborn baby is completely formed. Everything is ready. We're just waiting for delivery date. And with that delivery, we need to take out the products that can remain because we need to clean off everything inside of mom. With the miscarriage, however, nature is actually doing everything before our 12 weeks. Um, sometimes even by 16 weeks, it can still occur 20 weeks. But usually after our three months, we have a bit of a, a more stable pregnancy going on. So whatever the circumstances, it is really grief. Um, sometimes moms have a lot of rage. You're feeling so down. It feels like, you know, it, it, it really is something that is significant that a woman goes through. And you feel even numb. Sometimes they will phone me and they say, hi, sister, um, take me off your list. 
Um, then I'm like, why? No, I lost the baby. And mom still want to talk about it further. And that's fine because there is a time that you're going to want to maybe talk. And then we take it from there. Nobody can tell you a right way to grieve anything. And um, we all deal with our emotions differently. So then we look at our next point, which is how soon can we get pregnant? So you've dealt with the grief, you've dealt with, you know, um, the, the, the mechanisms of miscarriage, but now what next? So now my next month happens, I have like a normal -ish regular period, maybe shorter, maybe longer, maybe in between spotting, and the following week, the same thing. So how after miscarriage, your body begins again a reproductive cycle. So ovulation takes place, menstruation takes place. I usually tell moms, wait about three, three, even six months, just to have your body just get that rhythm, your emotions get some rhythm, um, also getting your vitamins intake and all those things ready. So ovulation can occur again in two weeks. So now you may have a, a slightly heavy period, next month a shorter period, and then you find out you're pregnant. Um, and that also can put your body through a lot of stresses because hormonally you're going like this. It's like a roller coaster. So please have this chat with your doctor after a miscarriage. With your, Usually after a miscarriage, he will see you in a few weeks to just check everything. Then you have that talk when you're ready to start uh, trying again and planning. But three to six months for myself, because I do think you can never get over a miscarriage. I don't think any child is replaced ever, but I do think your body has just that hormonal shift going up and down is just a bit more stable. So then we look at our next factor um, in this and we look at how, what vitamins will I actually take? Um, I believe folic acid before the time. So folic acid is very, very important. Um, please, moms, um, when you are planning to conceive again, get everything going, get your iron levels checked. That's a big thing because sometimes after miscarriages, mom loses maybe a bit more blood than your normal period and you can be a bit low in iron. Um, have those things checked out, have a seat with your doctor, and then you will also tell your doctor um, about any health conditions that could have risen up. Oftentimes, it could have been a bit of a blood pressure condition, they could have been a condition of your sugar. So get those things sorted before you're trying again. Um, so now we're going to look at your vitamin D and C operation in your body. So usually when you are trying to become pregnant, vitamins are very important. So then you will try and do your vitamin of your folic acid, try and take in your other vitamins and check your normal levels before trying again. Okay, if you had a history of miscarriages, your doctor may order certain testing to check underlying condition. Now, this is the conditions like your blood pressure, your diabetes, um, they will also check for preeclampsia if you had it previously, because we don't just want to go on. We want to make sure that you and baby are ready. Um, and after this, you might feel emotionally ill-prepared to get right back into trying. So even though it is psychologically possible to become pregnant straight immediately, because in two weeks you can become pregnant again, the most important thing is that you may call for delaying. Um, three to six months, as I mentioned previously, just for that health checkup, emotional roller coaster, and just getting yourself ready physically is very important. Folic acid is a must. I don't believe any mom should try conceiving without getting herself boosted with that. Your iron levels needs to always be checked out, as I mentioned earlier. And in the end, you ought to hold off until you are both emotionally and physically ready. Because we often don't forget about the dad in a miscarriage because we think he doesn't carry the child. But that could be a thing that is he's carrying with him. So that is a very important thing to remember to keep your, your, your dad as well connected, chat, communicate, go to counseling lessons. Um, there is often a lot of counseling needed before you guys just take on another baby because babies cannot be just exchanged with the next one. We need to remember, we need to grieve any, any baby loss. So what is the possibility of a second miscarriage? 
We know that after one miscarriage, there is a possibility. Statistically, there's many different things that can be. So remember, if we have a difficulty in blood clotting, we have hormonal problems, antibody diseases, or elevated blood pressure, or even diabetes. These can put us in place for another miscarriage. And with the blood clotting or autoimmune diseases, there's also a factor, a recess factor. That's why after the birth of your first child, even a miscarriage, they need to check your blood group so that they can give you that recess factor. And those are all things that can result in a second miscarriage. However, that is scientifically. But we also know that these little miracles we carry has overcome all these things. I've had pregnancy overcome clotting, hormonal, autoimmune, elevated blood pressure, preeclampsia, diabetes. So please don't get caught up in the what if with your next pregnancy. Just remember, we're taking it each week as it comes. Be prepared, prepared first. That's why we're doing this today. So we prepared emotionally. We prepared physically by doing our vitamins and our health checks. And then if we do get pregnant from there on out, we actually are preparing ourselves for whatever is to come, but we know medically we are taken care of. We will then be placed under high risk condition, which means that careful checkup. So if you're not placed under that, doctors just assume everything is fine. And oftentimes that was happened that caused the first miscarriage. But now that you are kind of in this question marks high risk, we now are monitoring everything even more thoroughly. We have an eagle eye on you. Then we are looking, are there any other options? It's crucial to realize that miscarriage may not always be in or um, avoidable in the first trimester, okay? And we have 50% of losses. Um, because of that chromosomal defects, there are certain conditions that does cause miscarriage or over 35. However, those myths are very soon going to be busted by scientists because moms are having kids now, even their first kid at 35, we no longer having kids at 18. We are a generation that's having kids later. Um, and, and oftentimes, you know, those things, I really think if they're going to a bit more scientific study, that may change. But for now, with the research we have, we do know that it can lead to defects, okay? But even so, we must maintain a healthy lifestyle. So we try and balance our balanced diet with a lot of water. We consume an extra 300 calories. We drink 10 cups of water a day, not three liters. You're going to drown your body. We take our vitamins, especially folic acid, and then light exercises. So if we are pregnant, these are things that we will also follow through, especially in early pregnancy. Please don't start a new fitness program. Light walking, gentle Pilates, um, yoga, and um, sports that causes falls or risk, like um, horseback riding, quad biking. Please leave it for them. And things that cause you to overheat, like intense yoga, like the hot yoga. Even some Pilates can be quite intensive. Do the deep breathing meditation rather than the actual heavy exercise until later in the pregnancy. Caffeine. So usually we say one cup of coffee a day. Please don't go over that and maintain your prenatal checkups with your doctor or midwife. And remember, you must relay your health concerns. Don't just say, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, because we need to know what's happening and to prescribe as well as to treat you as the mom. And then what do I do physically? So physically, like exercise, like walking is fine, especially if you've always been sporty, but don't take up new things if you've never liked sport. And then paying attention to our emotions. If we need to see somebody like a psychologist or a psychiatrist, please tell your gynae, you will refer you medically. We do know what you're going through. So we won't think there's anything abnormal or wrong. We will actually appreciate that honest feedback. And then remember, after a miscarriage, it's also normal to feel quite guilty um, with your next pregnancy. So that is things we need to talk about and have going, okay? And if you're not feeling right or your emotions is just all for you, please seek help. Please let us know. So moms, this was such an interesting topic. 
I hope you guys do understand. It's a very sensitive topic. So in certain things, I elaborated till the point of you understanding and also that you know that we are always available if you need to talk. Please seek out at your gynae as well as your midwife and, and let us know um, if there's any other helpline you need. It is always available and that you're not alone going through this. I hope this has been helpful.